massive, unstoppable, deadly. A level of destruction that was, you know, over hundreds of miles of the coastline. We'll travel the globe investigating some of the world's most devastating tsunamis. Each bigger than the last, each packing more punch, each taking us one step closer to a mega tsunami. A wave that will not just rewrite the record books, it will erase them. No coastline on the planet is truly safe from tsunamis. They're caused by massive displacements of water, triggered by the Earth's most powerful forces, earthquakes, landslides, and volcanic eruptions. As long as we have earthquakes on Earth and landslides, the, the various phenomena that create tsunamis, we're going to have tsunami waves. Uh, it's just a matter of time when the next one strikes. Tsunamis are dramatically different from the typical waves that constantly sweep across the planet. They can travel faster than 800 kilometers per hour. They can stretch for thousands of square kilometers across the ocean surface. It's a good 15, 20 feet tall. Easy. They strike with huge mass and terrifying velocity. The most common method of gauging their height is run-up, the wave's highest point of impact on land. Each tsunami profiled here has a higher run-up than the last. Over 100 major tsunamis have struck in the past 100 years, killing hundreds of thousands and destroying billions of dollars of property. But they are not the biggest tsunamis to strike the planet. Scientists have found startling evidence that even larger waves have occurred in the past, mega tsunamis. These things have been described as, as culture-ending events. Experts believe that a mega tsunami lies in our future. To understand its power, scale and potential, we'll first investigate five of the most destructive tsunamis of the past 60 years. Each has its own character, each has its own story, each brings us closer to a mega disaster. Hawaii is a tropical paradise that attracts millions of tourists. But this Pacific island holds a dark secret. It's blasted by more tsunamis than almost anywhere else on the planet. The Hawaiian Islands, sitting as they do in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, are affected by tsunamis from all regions of the Pacific. The Ring of Fire is a volatile fracture zone surrounding the Pacific Ocean plate. 90% of the world's earthquakes occur here. Earthquakes are the most common cause of tsunamis, which is why Hawaii gets hit often and from all directions. Destructive tsunami struck here in 1837, 1868, 1877, 1923, 1946, 52, 57, 60, and 64. This makes it the unofficial tsunami capital of the Pacific. 2.28 a.m. April 1st, 1946. A magnitude 8.1 earthquake rips through the Aleutian Islands off the coast of Alaska. A huge stretch of the ocean floor is uplifted, displacing the entire column of water above it. A massive pulse of energy propels a wall of water, a tsunami, towards Hawaii at nearly 800 kilometers per hour. Three thousand eight hundred kilometers away, in the small seaside village of Laupahoehoe, children and teachers gather to prepare for the day's classes. Masu McShane is one of the teachers. We were in our cottages, and the Akionas who lived in that house that's no longer there knocked on our door and said, "Come see the tidal wave." At first glance, it's deceptively innocent. We looked over, and the wave 
ocean sucked out and then it came in a little bit more like emptying a bathtub and it sucked out again and we said this is a tidal wave i don't think much of that what masu doesn't know is that tsunamis are not single waves they move forward in what's known as a tsunami train a group of waves of many different sizes First waves are seldom the largest, so what appears to be insignificant is actually the precursor to something much, much bigger. And then it did it again. And this time, it went in further and sucked out more. And we thought, a twin died away, tied away. How interesting and odd. As the water recedes, an extraordinary 152 meters, Masu and her roommates pose for a photograph. Masu stands captivated while a third wave approaches. Famous last words I said, I hope this will be a big one. And it kept coming. And that was the first time we ever thought to be afraid. As the tsunami approaches shore, it behaves like a giant train wreck. The front of the wave slows while the back continues to push. The wave's energy is compressed, forcing it to stand and lift out of the sea. It just got bigger, and so we dropped the camera, ran inside. I can remember the water just crashed in the windows. The roof fell down. The wave tosses Masu like a rag doll, at first in towards the school, but then suddenly out towards the sea. I knew I was going to die. Masu spends the next nine hours clinging to debris before finally being rescued. She is the only lucky one. All of her roommates perish. At the school, 16 children and five teachers are lost. But the tsunami is not finished with Hawaii. 37 kilometers south of Laupahoehoe, the sleepy trading town of Hilo Bay is also caught unawares. Here, the tsunami destroys nearly 500 homes and businesses, kills 96, and injures hundreds. Descriptions of the 1946 tsunami were that it came across the breakwater with the greatest of ease just overcame it and then washed across town. Other people describe seeing boulders blasted out as the water surged across. Walter Dudley is an oceanographer from the University of Hawaii in Hilo Bay. For more than 20 years, he studied tsunamis. One of his most significant findings is that their destructive power is caused not just by the wave itself, but also by what's underneath them. Well, one of the things that makes them such an interesting phenomenon to study is that they are all different. And as they travel across the oceans, they're affected by the ocean floor along their track. So the waves are constantly being bent or refracted. And then as they come ashore, they are further altered. No two pieces of coastline are the same. Each has its own unique undersea topography that affects the waves differently. In Hilo, it is the natural rounded shape of the bay. You can think of a bathtub and as little children get in a bathtub, they can slosh the water back and forth, and they quickly find out that there's a speed at which the water will really move. The first two waves to hit the bathtub-shaped Hilo Bay caused the water to slosh back and forth. When a third wave arrived, it combined with the sloshing water to produce a larger and more destructive wave. It pretty much wiped out everything that was on the ocean side of town in the main parts of downtown it picked up the railway and it twisted the railway rails into pretzels the third wave reached a run-up height of nine meters it destroyed most of the foreshore of Hilo Bay but less than 15 years after the 46 disaster Hawaii would again be hit by a deadly tsunami a wave bigger than the last that would defy logic and bring Hilo to its knees once more. 
On May 22, 1960, the largest earthquake in recorded history ruptures the Earth's crust off the coast of Chile. 1,000 kilometers of the ocean floor is violently thrust up 20 meters, spawning a monster tsunami. It's so huge and powerful that it crosses the entire Pacific Ocean, slamming into Hawaii on the way. This time, technology installed since the 1946 quake warns residents of Hilo Bay five hours in advance. But the warning falls on deaf ears. In the preceding 12 years, about three out of four alarms had turned out to be small tsunamis. So instead of inspiring fear, let's get away from this potential disaster, I think it inspired curiosity, because it is a fascinating phenomenon. Let's go down and watch. Although the civil defense were saying people evacuate, there were a lot of us, me included, that out of curiosity went down to look, you know, to see what was going to happen. Local real estate agent Al Inouye and many others assume that because this wave is coming from the southeast and Hilo faces the north, the bay will be spared. They are wrong. Just after midnight, the first wave strikes. You could hear people yelling and screaming behind me that were being caught in a wave. That was an experience because, you know, it's, it's, and it still stays in my mind, all the screaming and yelling, and, and I couldn't do anything about it. It sounded like several trains, you know, um, rushing down a track. I mean, it was really a roar. And, you know, you can hear the crashing of uh, houses against each other. It's hard to describe. It was just a, a, a sound that you don't want to hear again. I mean, it's, it was horrible. Dawn breaks on a nightmare. 61 people are dead and more than 700 buildings destroyed or severely damaged. The 1960 tsunami took locals and experts by surprise. After thorough study, scientists discovered a remarkable aspect of the tsunami. As the wave reached the shallow water off the southeast coast of the island, the middle of the wave slowed, while the outside of the wave kept moving, causing the wave to wrap around the island. Then, just as in 1946, the natural shape of the bay added to the tsunami's destructive power. This time, the largest wave had a run-up height of 10.5 meters, one and a half meters higher than in 1946. But Hawaii wasn't the only location struck by the monster tsunami. It roared thousands of kilometers across the Pacific, striking virtually every coast, including Japan, where 122 people died. Tsunamis have an incredible amount of energy. And as they travel across the ocean, they use up very, very little of that. It's when they come ashore that all that energy is unleashed. The 1946 and 1960 tsunamis gave scientists new insights into the complex behavior and ocean crossing power of these giant waves. But when a local tsunami hits Japan, it strikes with larger and more powerful waves than the 46 and 60 Hawaiian tsunamis combined. And there's no time to evacuate. And later, a tsunami that combines sudden impact with awesome size, a mega disaster. The 1946 and 1960 Hawaiian tsunamis had run up heights of 9 and 10.5 meters. Shaped and intensified by the ocean floor and coastline, they smashed the island communities with unexpected force. But there's another tsunami hotspot where a larger and more deadly wave struck without warning. Second only to Hawaii, Japan is the most tsunami-prone location in the Pacific. The Japanese have been hit so many times by these giant waves that they created the word tsunami, meaning harbor wave, to describe these terrifying events.
these waves can come from as far away as Chile or as close as 80 kilometers offshore. The locally generated tsunamis pose the greatest danger. They strike within minutes of being formed and with awesome power. Ten seventeen pm July 12, 1993. A magnitude 7.8 earthquake rips the ocean floor off the coast of Hokkaido. The epicenter is only 80 kilometers from the tiny island of Okushiri and generates one of the biggest and most destructive tsunamis Japan has ever experienced. Fisherman Jiro Adachi from the village of Aonai knows about tsunamis. He survived one 10 years earlier that also hit Okushiri. When Jiro feels the earthquake, he knows a tsunami is probable. He quickly evacuates his wife and children from their seaside home, sending them to higher ground in the car while he shuts off the gas. He moves swiftly, but not swiftly enough. Just four minutes after the quake, the first wave hits him with overwhelming force as it surges to an incredible 15 meters. It started to pull me back into the sea. I held on to something and thought that I must run to the mountain. Somehow, Jiro manages to find firm ground. He flees to the safety of a nearby hill. In a few terrifying minutes, the tsunami destroys 80 houses and fishing shacks. But the danger is not over. Out of the darkness, a second wave strikes. Homes, boats, cars and trucks spared by the first wave are smashed to pieces. Fires erupt as gas pipes burst. Aonai is under siege. Jido and other survivors rush to the waterfront to help the injured. We heard people shouting for help. They were calling, help me, help me. I heard a lot of voices, women's voices and children's voices. Suddenly, amidst the cries for help, Jiro hears something that chills his heart. Suddenly, I heard a familiar voice between wave breaks, so I shouted, Achen, is that you, Achen? And then I heard, Daddy. I heard that from the darkness. His young daughter is somewhere in the raging sea. As Jiro's family fled, the tsunami's first wave rolled their car and hurled them into the ocean. Jiro dives into the turbulent waters. Normally I'm a great swimmer, but this was incredibly difficult. Sometimes I was swimming, but I couldn't move forward at all. And other times I'd suddenly be pulled backwards by the sea. Miraculously, father and daughter make it to shore. Seven hours later, the Coast Guard finds Jiro's wife and son, kilometers out to sea, clinging to debris. As dawn breaks, the tsunami's power becomes horrifically clear. Large parts of Aonai are completely flattened. Fires continue to rage, and most of the fishing fleet is lost. Across the island, 437 houses are destroyed, and more than 800 severely damaged. 198 people are dead. The aftermath of the disaster confronts scientists with an intriguing mystery. The two waves that hit Aonai came from completely different directions. The first wave of the tsunami came from the west area where the seismic center was, and it attacked only the low part in the south area of Aonai. But the second wave came from the east, away from the tsunami's source. The second wave came in just 10 minutes after the first, and it attacked all of this area of Aonai. The first wave that hit the west coast of Okushiri came directly from the source. But then, just like in Hawaii, the tsunami wrapped around the island, creating a second wave that struck Aonai from the opposite direction. 
But the wraparound effect does not explain why the tsunami hit Okushiri with such brutal force. The reason is the extreme proximity of the event which created the tsunami. After a tsunami is generated, it radiates out like ripples on a pond. As the ripples expand wider and wider, the energy spreads out over a larger area. The closer the source of the tsunami is to the impact zone, the more concentrated the energy. Okushiri was only 80 kilometers from the source, so it received the full brunt of the tsunami. Just north of Aonai, the waves reached a staggering 31 meters. Today, the legacy of the 1993 tsunami is set in concrete. Huge walls up to 11 meters high and extending 14 kilometers along the coast stand guard against the sea. Powerful steel gates protect river mouths and the harbor is bolstered by concrete blocks to reduce wave impact. These ramparts against the waves are stronger than normal sea walls for good reason. The forces they must withstand are utterly different. Normal waves form through the transfer of energy from the wind to the ocean surface. Tsunamis are generated by phenomenal transfers of energy. Even the largest wind waves have a maximum wavelength from crest to crest of a few hundred meters. Tsunamis can have wavelengths of hundreds of kilometers. When they hit, they keep coming and coming. In a unique experiment, scientists in Japan are measuring the impact of those forces. At this lab in Kanagawa, engineers are using the largest man-made tsunami in the world to help design stronger coastal structures. This machine can generate waves more than three meters high, propelling 300 cubic meters of water down a 180 meter long chute. The best thing is to know the characteristics of the power of tsunami in each situation and build buildings according to those characteristics. Taro Arikawa leads a team that measures the power of tsunamis under controlled conditions. This tsunami is only two-thirds of a meter high, but it strikes with one ton per square meter of power. To demonstrate what that kind of power can do, Arikawa puts himself in the wave's line of fire. Without the rope and harness, he'd be swept away by this miniature tsunami. Bigger tsunamis are even more powerful. This 2.4 meter wave hits with the force of 10 tons per square meter. Even after the initial impact, it continues to surge forward with a sustained pressure of 4 tons per square meter. The tsunami in Okushiri was much higher and hundreds of times more powerful. Scientists here believe their studies will translate into stronger and better engineered structures capable of withstanding tsunami strikes. Once we can reduce the power, the reduced destructive power of tsunami coming ashore would not cause as much.